on Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. I've been thinking. Yeah? We ought to renovate this place. What? Renovate it? Uh, oh, blast it, Chester. What's the matter? Oh, nothing, nothing. I, I was trying to write and listen to you at the same time. That's all. It can't be done. Well, Marshal. Yeah, what's the matter, Lee? I'm drunk. The way he was walking, I thought he'd been shot. No, I'm not shot. I never saw you drunk before, Lee. Well, would you like a little coffee or something? Ah. Where's my gun? Now lock me up. What? Lock me up, I say. What, you, you mean you want to sleep in jail here? I do. You keep my gun. Are there any blankets out there, Chester? Well, there's one, Mr. Dillon. Oh, no, that's enough. Okay, Lee. Just follow Chester, then. I will. Marshal, I come here to prevent a killer. Oh? I'm drunk enough to want to kill him, and I'm sober enough to know I'm too drunk to kill him. You understand? To kill who, Lee? Jim Salter. That's my foreman. Is he in town, too? He is, at the Texas Trail. And let him stay there. Keep him out of here. I'm going to bed. Right in there, Mr. Dargan. There you are. My, I never saw Mr. Dargan like that before, Mr. Dillon. No. I wonder what he was fighting with Salter about. Well, maybe Salter started it. Maybe he's drunk, too. Well, if he is, knowing him, he'll be after someone else to fight with now. I think I'll go take a look, Chester. All right, sir. Oh, Chester, if uh, Lee wakes up, just uh, give him another drink, huh? Yes, sir. Well, how come you're alone, Kitty? Being alone isn't so bad, Matt, sometimes. Uh Oh, Buy you a drink? No, thanks. I don't see Jim Salter anywhere. I wouldn't complain about that. Well, then he was here, huh? Sitting right where you are, and he'll be back any minute. How drunk is he, Kitty? Well, he isn't very drunk. It might be an improvement. <laughs> It'd break his heart to hear you talk like that. If he has one. Here he comes now. Let's ask him. He looks sober enough. You move in fast, Marshal. Sit down, Salter. Sit down. Seems as how it's my table, I will. I, uh, ran into Lee Dorgan. He was pretty mad about something. Isn't that so? Yeah. But it's all right as long as you're not looking for trouble. Me, Marshal? I never look for trouble. Neither does Lee. Now, you know those southerners, Marshal. They're always getting insulted about something. You've been foreman on Lee's ranch for over a year now, Salter. Is this the first time he's wanted to kill you? <laughs> Is that what he said? That's what I heard him say. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 
But Marshal Lee's had a little bad luck with his cattle, that's all. When he's had a drink or two, he needs someone to blame it on. You know how it is with these greenhorns. No. How is it? If it weren't for me, he wouldn't have as many cows as he's got. Now he's lost a few strays, he's all upset. Well, as long as it doesn't end in gunplay. Oh, me and Lee get along fine when he's sober. Yeah. You will have to leave, Matt. I'm afraid so, Kitty. Then I'm going to bed. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do that. Who says I can't, mister? Good night, Matt. <laughs> Good night, Kitty. Well, I'll be. Mighty nice of you, Chester, to bring me all that coffee. Oh, don't mention it, Mr. Dargan. I had a hangover once myself. Well, here's your gun, Lee. Oh. Thank you, Marshal. You, uh, still feel like killing Jim Salter? I'll kill any man that cheats me. That's how I was brought up, and that's how I am. So? I guess it's just instinct that tells me I'm being robbed by a Marshal. I got no proof at all, none whatsoever. What is it, Lee? Don't your cattle tally up right? Look, I came out here from Alabama 18 months ago. I bought a ranch. I'm trying to raise beef. I've learned a little, but I can see it takes years to be a cattleman. Meantime, I'm green and I'm an easy mark, but I'm not so dumb I can't count. Marshal, I branded over 300 calves last spring and fall, and more than half of them are missing right now. Stolen? I don't know, Marshal. I've asked every rancher and every buyer around here to be on the lookout for my brand that hadn't turned up once. Well, why do you think Salter has anything to do with it? Instinct, I told you. I just don't trust him. Nothing more, but it's enough. Well, then why don't you fire him? Uh, pride, I suppose. I want to beat him at his own game, whatever it is. Well, good luck at it, Lee. Well, I need more than luck, Marshal. I, I, I need a little help. I just don't know enough about this business. Are you asking me to help you? I am. But how? Come out to the ranch. Take a look around. Maybe you'll see something I can't see. Well, I don't know. We're that Brandon I can... again tomorrow, Marshal. Come out then. You, you've got to help me. I've been... I'll be ruined if this goes on anymore. All right, Lee, I'll come. But, uh... Will you promise me one thing? What's that? If Salter does prove to be guilty, you won't try to kill him? No, I can't promise that. I respect the law, Marshal, but I got my own code, too. Thanks, just... Now, now, wait a minute, Lee. You're stubborn, but I don't think you deserve being ruined. All right, I'll come. Thank you, Marshal. Thank you. You know, the reason I got drunk last night was because I just felt so almighty helpless. Mad and helpless. Yeah. I know the feeling. See you tomorrow. Marshal Dillon. Good morning, Mr. Peters. And what can I do for you this morning? Well, uh, I'm interested in some brands that you got mm -hmm. registered here. Oh, you don't mean to tell me that you're going into the cattle business, Marshal? <laughs> <laughs> no, not likely. I just want to see what new brands have been registered in the past, oh, 12 mm -hmm. or 13 months. Well, certainly, certainly, Marshal. Uh, let's see, 1865, Yeah, here it is. There, there you are. That's the official brand book for the last two years. Uh, thank you. You can start anywhere you like in it. Well, uh, maybe you remember, Mr. Peters. Mm -hmm. Has Jim Salter got a brand registered? Mm, Salter? Yeah, Jim Salter. The fellow who works for Lee Doggin? That's right. Yeah. Um, last summer... 
July, I believe. Look there. July? Mm hmm. Yeah, July, 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 July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm? Uh, so the James Solar, July 14th. Bar S. That's it. Bar S, yes, indeed. How's he doing? Uh, fine, Mr. Peters, fine. Uh, thanks for the help. Oh, anytime, Marshal. Anytime at all. <laughs> That's what I'm paid for. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Marshal. <laughs> When we weren't working, most of the cattle buyers in town spent their time drinking toddy and telling lies at the Dodge House. And there I learned that a number of Bar S calves had been sold in the fall and some more of them in the spring. They remembered because it wasn't often a man sold only calves and also because the brands were newly burned on. But they said the brands were clean and there was no question of any previous marking having been altered. I figured Salter was a whole lot smarter than the ordinary rustler. And the next day I found out just how smart. They sure got their branding fire set far enough apart, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, they have. Here's Jim Salter now at this first fire. Now we'll stop and say hello, Chester. All right, let him go, boys. That's interesting. What is? I'll tell you later. Now, you don't have to stop work just because we're here, Soldier. That's all right, Marshal. Yeah, but you didn't brand that one. You just have to cut him out and rope him again. Iron's cold anyway. Oh, you got another iron there in the fire. We'll get him branded, Marshal. What are you doing out there anyway? Oh, we needed a change of scenery, so we thought we'd pay Lee a visit. Where is he? Working the fire down yonder. You sure do keep your fire separated. Anything else you fellas object to? Well, no, I wasn't objecting. I was just making an entirely impersonal observation, that's all. Well, go do your observing on Lee. You came to see him. Salter, I'd starve plumb to death before I'd ever work around you. You sure would, Chester. All right, Jim. Wasting time. See you later, Marshal. Yeah. Okay, Adams, bring another one out. Okay. Yeah. He's smart, that Salter. To me, he's just mean and downright graceless. Well, he's that too, Chester. Oh? You got something figured out, Mr. Dillon? I got it all figured out. What? Salter's stealing cattle, all right. I know just how he's doing it. But the problem now is how to handle Lee Dargan and that coat of his. I wouldn't want to see Lee hung for murder. No, sir. I surely wouldn't either. Hello. Hi, Marshal. Hold it, man. Hold it. How are you, Marshal? Yes, sir. Finally. Well, about through for the day. Why don't you ride on down to house? Okay. I'll be along directly. Uh, we stopped by Salter's fire back there. Oh, how are they doing? Fine. Uh, tell me something, Lee. Does Salter always work alone with those same two cowboys? Yeah, come to think of it, he does. Why? I was just curious. We'll see you at the house, Lee. Sure, Marshal. Tell the cook I'll string him up and supper in ready when we get there. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. Bad house Mr. Dargan's got here, Mr. Dillon. That's fine. Let's sit on the porch here, Chester. They'll be along soon. Yes, sir. Uh. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. I've give up trying to figure it out about Salter. You'll just have to explain it. Well, I told you he sold fresh branded calves under the bar S mark he's got registered. Yes, sir. Well, those were Lee's calves. You ever hear of using a cold brand, Chester? 
A cold brain? Yeah. You can either put it on through a wet blanket or you can just keep the iron hot enough to burn hair and press it down lightly so it won't scorch the hide. Oh, yeah. Looks like a fine brand for a few months. That is, until the calf sheds. Well, I'll be doggone. And then the calf's as unmarked as the day it got dropped. You can brand it at leisure with any mark that appeals to you, like a bar S, for example. So that's what Salter's been doing. He was about to put a cold iron on that calf a while ago when we rode up. Sure, sure. He works at a distance from Dorgan because the other cowboys had noticed right away what he's up to. Eh, poor Lee, he's sure right about being green at this business. Well, he's going to learn now, Mr. Dillon. No. No, Chester, I can't tell him. Well, why not? Lee meant it when he said he'd kill Salter if he had any proof. And if he did that, he'd be worse off than he is now. Well, then why don't you just arrest that man? You know, Judge would let him off, I'm afraid. Cold brand can be laid to carelessness. Of course, we could wait a couple of months and catch him doing his bar S branding. That's risky, too, though. Well, what are you going to do, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. But I'll have to figure something out by morning. Turn to the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, there's a lifeline that stretches from here to Korea. A lifeline that you help sustain for our fighting men when you give blood to the Red Cross blood donor program. Call the Red Cross for an appointment to give blood the first thing Monday morning. And now, the second act of Gunsmoke. Standard, Marshal. It just doesn't make any sense to me, but I asked for help, so all right, I'll do as you say. Then call Salter over here and tell him. Okay, Marshal. Salter! Salter! Yeah! Come over here. What do you want, Lee? We're already late this morning. I'm going to make a change in our Brandon setup, Salter. What? I've decided it'll be faster from now on. We all work from one fire instead of two. What for? You and Adams and Smith will work alongside the rest of us. That's all. Whose idea is this, anyway? Those are my orders. Oh? You still talk like a Confederate colonel, don't you? That'll do, Salter. Sure. This for you, Marshal. I never did like you anyway. It must have been pretty hard on Salter that day, having to put a permanent brand on Lee Dorgan's calves with a good hot iron. But he had no choice, and he did it. About noon, Chester and I said goodbye and rode back to Dodge. I figured that'd be the end of Lee's trouble. But two nights later, while Doc and I were taking our ease at the Alifraganza, I found out I was wrong. Uh, yeah, it's like that ignorant cowboy got a letter from his sweet girlfriend in St. Louis, Matt. <laughs> well, all right, Doc, what did the letter say? Oh, well, she mentioned that she'd found a nice room with running water. Yeah. <laughs> running water. <laughs> and so this uncivilized son of the prairie wrote her back to get rid of that Indian at once or our engagement is off. <laughs> you see, he thought that uh, running water... Uh, you understand that now, don't you, Matt? Because... <laughs> well, that's the next drink's on you, Doc. I'm sure, Matt, sure. And when you get it, ask the bartender for a couple of good cigars. I really, right, as soon you? as I finish, oh, say that was the fun. <laughs> Uh-oh, Sam, I thought you left Lee Dargan out of his room. What? Just came in the door. Must be looking for you. He's coming this way, Matt. Yeah. Uh-oh, what's that under his arm? Oh, looks like a blanket. Uh, hello, Lee. Sit down. Marshal, Doc. Oh, how are you, Lee? What are you doing in town? Are you all through, Brandon? Now we're through. Well, how'd it go? Yeah. Take a look at this blanket, Marshal. Huh? I 
It's all marked up, isn't it? It sure is. And it's burned with my brand all over. Where'd you find this, Lee? One of my men was riding by the place where Salter and his had his Brandon fire marshal. His horse kicked it up. They'd half buried it there. But he showed it to you, is that it? That's it. And he explained all about coal Brandon to me at the same time. I see. Where's Salter now, Lee? And he got the wind. I was on to him and left, Marshal. I think he's in Dodge with those two who worked with him, Adams and Smith. And, uh... You're looking for him? And I'm looking for him. But I'm telling you so you can look, too. That blanket's enough evidence even for the law, I figure. Along with the witnesses that would convict him. But, uh... I'll find him, Lee. Better hurry, Marshal. I might find him first. Lee! You'll stand trial if you kill him. I'm not worried about that. So long, Marshal. Why didn't you take his gun, Matt? So as he couldn't get in any trouble. He just find another one, Doc. He's a mighty determined man. Yes, I can see that. I'll uh, take that drink another time, Doc. I got work to do. Hey, sure, Matt. Oh, do me a favor. Will you drop this blanket off at the office for me? Oh, you bet your life I will. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? There's something wrong, sir. I just saw Salter and two men walk up behind Lee Dargan over there and grab his gun. What? Well, where are they? They were headed toward Kelly's stable. I thought I'd better find you first. Come on. What are they doing in Dodge, anyway? Uh, Lee's on to him, Chester. He knows the whole story now. And they know he knows it. Well, then somebody's going to get killed, sure. Yeah, it looks that way. All right. Stay behind me, Chester. That's the only door to the stable. They'll have to come out there, sir. Yeah, I know. But we're going in after him. Easy now. The entrance to Kelly's stable was open, but there was no light showing. Chester and I stepped quickly around the frame of the door, and then we stopped just inside, waiting for our eyes to get used to the darkness. We could hear voices in the back where the men were saddling up. And then, suddenly, we both saw it at the same time. The first doll, Mr. Dillon. Look. Yeah. It's Mr. Dargan. They hung him. <laughs> yeah, they just did it. He can't be dead yet. Here, take my knife and cut him down. You can climb up on the feed box. I'll cover you from here now. Hurry. Yes, sir, I'll hurry. Dark and got loose somehow. Get up front there and take a look, both of you. I'll finish that enough. Okay, soldier. Come on, Smith. Stay in here, Chester. Don't move. Mr. Dargan's breathing. When they come up, we'll jump them. I'll take Adams. Now, quiet now. Hit him on the head and have done with him. You do it, Smith. I'll wait here. Yeah, okay, I'll stay here, sir. You all right, Chester? Yes, sir. Good. Now keep low. What's going on up there? Adam? Smith? Mr. Dargan's coming too now. He's breathing easier. Keep him quiet. Hold him down if he tries to get up. Salter will be along in a minute. Yes, sir. What are you two doing? Answer me, blast you! Who's in there? Throw down your gun, Salter. Who's that? It's Matt Dillon. Now do as I say. Sure. 
door, Marshal. Here it is. All right, Chester. Get the guns off of Adams and Smith. We don't have to worry about Salter. All right, sir. Lee? Lee, how are you? Oh, it's good to breathe again, Marshal. I was about gone. Well, you're all right. Well, we got him. And Salter's dead. You won't have any trouble now. No, no. But it's not easy the way you people educate a man out here. Well, if it was easy, Lee, anyone could manage. Well, thanks, Marshal. Yeah, sure. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John McIntyre as Lee, Harry Bartell as Salter, and John Daner as Peters. Harley Bear as Chester, Georgia Ellis as Kitty, and Howard McNair as Doc. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service, to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. flirtation that leads to a killing interest Mr. and Mrs. North this coming Tuesday night on CBS Radio. Don't miss Kiss of Death when Pam and Jerry North go into action against the murderer. Also Tuesday night on most of these same CBS radio stations, John Lund as yours truly Johnny Dollar brings us his latest adventure in probing fraudulent insurance claims. Mr. and Mrs. North and yours truly Johnny Dollar, they're both thrilling Tuesday nighters at the star's address. This is Roy Rowan speaking, and this is the CBS Radio Network.